Hello everybody, my name is Ord and welcome back to the Ord Narrations channel. Cheating really is the biggest betrayal in any relationship that you can have. Today we read a, a post from someone asking, were you cheated on? How did you confront it? And they're asking for advice. Their post reads, my husband is cheating on me as we speak, but he doesn't know that I know. He hasn't covered all his bases. I have solid evidence he's been cheating for at least a month and he's totally detached from me. It's almost like he doesn't notice me anymore. I'm a ghost. And it was very sudden. I'm assuming once he started up the affair partner. I'm blindsided by this. I thought that he was the perfect man just a few weeks ago. Madly in love. Hurt beyond belief. But now, how do I confront him on the cheating? What is the best way to go about this? Is there anything you wish you'd said or didn't say during this process? Anything anyone can share is helpful. I also fear that he's waiting for me to miss that i.e. blow up at him, or come out with accusations, etc., in order to trigger the next step, which could be him leaving me. I still don't know what I want to do about a possible reconciliation or not, but I can't keep the cheating under wraps for too much longer. I definitely have to be as professional as possible with the reveal, if that makes sense. And they've added some more information in an edit, saying, I've already gone to consultations with a couple of lawyers and found one I like. I'm in a no-fault state. The affair is not going to matter much in the divorce unless I can prove that he spent considerable money on her, like 10k plus, which I don't think he has at this point. I'm not totally sure I want to go to the divorce route yet, but I cannot keep living in this pain while he cheats on me. I want to be smart about it though. So someone's left a comment saying, the thing I wish I had done differently was not showing my evidence right away. I would have met with an attorney and then given him the evidence along with my divorce papers drawn up. My husband's affair had already ended the year before, but I did not know that. I wish I had caught him in the middle of it to see what he would have done. The element of surprise would show his true colours, as well as his intentions. I completely agree. I think the general advice is basically to just gather as much information as you can, <laughs> go to a lawyer, and then do what they say to the letter. So often you hear stories about people who blow it up at the first opportunity. Obviously it's very... it's understandable, but you kind of put all your cards face up, if you know what I mean. Someone else replies with another comment saying, in caps, meet with a family lawyer, retain them, and then do everything they tell you to do. Which, yeah, exactly. Someone else commented saying, collect every shred of evidence you can and collect it with the intention of using it in divorce proceedings. Even if you don't actually end up getting divorced, make copies and save everything in multiple locations. I put everything on two encrypted thumb drives and five different cloud servers. Sounds a little overkill, but I understand the idea. Practice the conversation and predict his responses. Wait until you have a very strong case and have considered all possible outcomes and his replies. He will almost certainly downplay, deny and deflect, lie, etc. The standard playbook. Be prepared for this. It's very easy for them to convince you that nothing even happened when you have 99% evidence that something did happen. It's because the experience is incredibly traumatic and painful and you love them, desperately want to cling to their reassurances. Take your time, and when you're ready to confront him, do not rush into it, or you'll likely regret it, and you'll give him more time to lie and confuse you as much as he can. They uh, continue saying, I didn't think it was possible for the woman I loved and trusted completely to engage in the standard cheater's responses. I thought she was different, and she was telling the truth. It's almost impossible to see your significant other that way, at first, and it makes it easy for them to manipulate you. I completely agree. The kinds of people that cheat are likely somewhat narcissistic, and so they don't ever really see themselves as the bad guy. What they'll try and do is make you feel like the one at fault for why they had to go and cheat. It's the classic. <laughs> if I cheat on you, it's because you aren't good enough. Disgraceful. Someone made another comment saying, I was cheated on, and she didn't know I knew either. I had her served when she went away for a weekend for professional development. I had her served in the lobby of the hotel immediately after she checked in. Blindsiding her with papers was the best thing I did for me and my mental health. It was like I was taking control of the situation and never gave up that control. Good luck, stay strong, and do what's the best for you. Someone replied saying, this right here is how you drop them out of their high and mighty self-confident affair glow. You approach this as if it was a war. You go nuke and serve them letting them know that you are not backup and that they can be replaced. I think that's probably what actually hurts the most is the fact that if they have those kind of narcissistic traits, they'll kind of see themselves or you as slightly inferior, like they're the best you can get. 
and then when you drop them, it completely folds that worldview in half. It really, really hurts them deep down. You know, if they're being dropped by someone more inferior than them, then there's a contradiction somewhere in, in that logic. It continues saying, I keep telling folks to stop crying, whining, talking, begging, lying down just to be stepped on. There's plenty of time for that. Go to war and own it. You took the right action and are a hero. Completely agree. Someone else commented saying, I pushed to get specifics about the actual physical interactions because it seemed important at the time. In retrospect, I wish I hadn't. We are reconciled, but I still cannot get those images out of my head. It doesn't really matter what they did. I assume you have enough for it to fit your definition of infidelity. That's all you need. Someone replied to this saying, I'm so, so sorry for your mental health. It must be so hard to still be with them, knowing that the body they use with someone else is back on you. It sounds horrific. I'm so sorry. In the original, the comments are posted. Thank you for your support. It is really tough, but it does get easier as time goes by. It's been six months since D-Day, divorce day, and I'm in a much better place than I was at the beginning. Okay, someone else left a comment saying, My wife failed to cover her tracks. I had a good feeling, but I had nothing positive. She was volunteering at a charity outlet, and the manager there just gave off the vibe, you know. Aging Lothario. Anyway, she told me she was going for this she was going into the city for a fundraising event. Can rattling. She'd been gone a couple of hours when our home phone rang. It was one of the other volunteers ringing to find out where she was. During the conversation, she mentioned that the aging Lothario had failed to turn up too. And that's where the alarm bells went off. When she did get home, I played it cool. Asked her how things had gone and how much she had raised. She lied like a Russian spy. Once she had given herself enough rope, I told her that her friend rang and told me she and the aging Lothario weren't there. The look of panic in her eyes was the final nail. She started trying to give me some bullshit, but I wasn't taking it. She gave up and admitted that she was with him, but trickled truth the shit out of him. She minimized and told me it was just a friendship. A week later, I followed her to one of their meetups. That didn't go well, and I ended up smashing windows in his car. <laughs> After that was more of the trickle truth. She tried to convince me it was my fault because she didn't think I was committed to her anymore. We did reconcile, but it has been 30 years of hard work. The trust never really comes back fully. I think once you realize that someone can do that to you, it's hard to return to that that original position. You know, like once you're exposed to that sort of reality, because if it's never happened to you, you don't know that it can even happen. Someone else made a comment saying, I would make sure you have multiple copies slash backups of any evidence. After a confrontation, your husband could look through your phone slash computer, etc., and destroy copies of evidence. Talk to an attorney beforehand. You may want to consider reconciliation, but some advice about your rights won't hurt. Make sure you have some funds set aside that only you can have access to in the event he closes his bank accounts, credit cards, etc. That's really good advice, to be fair. It also help keep funding the uh, lawyer. Tricky situation, OP, but the general consensus is gather as much information as you can. Don't make any moves regarding this, if possible, before you are 100% ready. So, what do you think OP should do? What would you do in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comments. Okay, we'll have to leave that there for today. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.